change out our two-way Norcold refrigerator to a residential refrigerator. I'm very excited about that because we're basically going to double our fridge size. Yep. Um, it's a 2.7 cubic, cubic feet. feet and we've decided to get a residential just because it's going to give us more space. It's going to be, I think, a 4.4. Mm -hmm. 4.4. And as you guys know, we cook just about every day. Yeah, so it's really important. Space in such a tiny area is massively important. Yeah. Um, so I'm really excited about this. So our refrigerator is a Norcold refrigerator. It's a, an N as in uh, night 302. And it's a two-way refrigerator. It's gas and electric. And um, so the first thing I did a couple of days ago is that I disconnected the gas line, which is this little thing here. And uh, we plugged it and we taped it to make sure that it doesn't leak. Now, I didn't get rid of the gas line, even though it's really easy to get rid of the gas line because it just goes right under that hole and then there's a main pipe that goes across because I was thinking two things. One, uh, should we sell the trailer? Someone might want to have a, put in another RV refrigerator and they have the gas line there already. Two, if we decide to grill or if we decide to cook outside with our gas stove, we can just connect it right there. So that's the reason why I kept it. This is this part is actually fairly simple. So there's this little plug, there's this little metal part in here, right there, and it has a switch off. So if you switch it one way, you get the gas going through. If you switch it the other way, it blocks the gas going in. And this hose that I just showed you basically goes plugged into there. So you just need to get a wrench and you know go into there like that, and you would just unscrew it from that. So that's the first thing I did. This is not a how-to. This is how I did it. <laughs> by watching a lot of videos and by reading, I am by no means an expert or knowledgeable. I, this is my <laughs> RV that I'm taking apart, that I'm doing all these things to it. Please do not follow what I do. <laughs> do your own research. Be comfortable with what you're doing. All right, so. All right, so the next thing I did is very easy, which is just I unplugged it. <laughs> it has a dedicated plug right in here, and I mm -hmm. just unplugged it. That's all I did. And there's a screw here that I saw on the bottom. I took out that screw. I don't know if that's part of what's holding the refrigerator down or not, but because it was screwed to the bottom, I figured it might prevent it from sliding out. Here on the top, it has um, two metal sheets, and they basically direct the airflow coming from the bottom out to cool down the refrigerator. While I don't think it will impede taking out the refrigerator, I'm going to remove them just to be really thorough. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I'm going inside to start taking a bunch of screws out. All right. So this is our current fridge and all this is like wasted space and it looks like there is not only on the top but there's like I don't know the fridge doesn't necessarily come all the way to the edge this is like a frame on this side as well as on this side it is empty and so like between here and here, it's, it is a lot of space. That frame is really thick, especially the top part. So we are looking forward in getting rid of all this tiny space and getting more. Step one. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna start by taking out the door. Um, I think that's the first thing I wanna do is take off the door.
supervising, right? You're doing a great job. Mm. Supervising Lou's frame removal. comfortable doing this because since Lou is working with electricity we unplugged everything so we're running on just batteries so that means only the fan can be on <laughs> um, I've opened up all the windows it is 86 degrees and very humid so we're basically sitting in a steam room <laughs> that looks like a very comfortable position with the Chi Chi head in between yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what can you do? Supervisor needs to be like front and center. <laughs> Make sure I'm doing it right. You might be blocking my screws <laughs> there though. So you might have to move. I'll go over here in the meantime. <laughs> but oh gosh. you might have to move from there really soon. <laughs> like right now. <laughs> Good girl, thank you. Cool. All right, so all the screws holding the frame in place are out. Time to pull this baby out, I think. <laughs> Do you think you need another set of hands? Nope. The top piece? I think so, I'm not 100% sure. Alrighty guys, if you're learning as we're learning. Or maybe you know and you're commenting down below, but by the time we read it, it's gonna be gone. <laughs> yes! Grabbing it. Who's got it pushed out a little bit? We're getting somewhere. So the bottom part didn't have any screws or nails or anything of that sort in it. It was basically all glue. Um, the front part. The front part, yeah, the bottom front. So by Lou coming to the back. And pushing and pushing and pushing helped get it loosened uh, by it angling upwards. And then once she pushed it enough, I was able to grab it from the front and kind of pull as well. So, fridge is out. So, we've got into a spacing issue. The door is 21 and a quarter wide from frame to frame. I thought it was 20 and a quarter. Not oh, 20. 20 and a quarter. And the fridge... The smallest part was 22 and 3 quarters? 21 and 3 quarters. 21 and 3 quarters. So Lou is going to remove this top part because that's basically the widest. That's what's making it wider without that top part on. It's like literally 20. So it's just going to fit in. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the next little step is removing that top part. And this is what I mean by the top part because of this black top frame, that's what's making the fridge stick out more, as you can tell from here, to so then all the way out here, and that's on both sides.
got that front part off. She put it diagonally so that we can fit it through. We took a picture of the way everything was connected so that once it's outside, she can reconnect everything exactly as is. So sadly, it did not fit through the door as much as we tried. So Lou is taking more pieces apart. <laughs> second attempt at bringing the fridge out still didn't work let me show you what's like blocking us this time around hi little girl there's no screws here so this what screws did you look i'm gonna bend that now and show you this about a finger wide is not letting us uh bring it out so between that edge of the fridge all the way to this edge about short that much Alright guys, so we got the RV fridge out, quite the headache, um, you ready to start trying to put in the new one? Quite the puzzle. <laughs> it was a puzzle, <laughs> she's right. <laughs> she is getting eaten alive by mosquitoes, yes. so uh, I'm bug repellent to the rescue. And I'm allergic to mosquito bites, so it's actually really painful. Yeah, like big old needles going through you. Yeah. Alright. Let's clean that up. So there is a whole lot of like sawdust, probably from when we were renovating this, or maybe even just time of this being in here. So we gotta clean this up. So I just took the fridge out of the truck. Gonna have to unbox it to get it in through there. Hello, hello. It is the next day. I know. We ran into a little bit of a complication. So that fridge actually did not fit in there. Um, when Lou measured it, she didn't realize that the bottom, there was like a platform. She thought it would go all the way down to the ground. Um, so that platform that's in that fridge area, I guess, um, kind of screwed it for us. So we couldn't fit the fridge in there. We ran back to Home Depot where we bought it and uh, returned it. We checked to see what they had there. They didn't have anything that was the exact measurement or similar measurement of what it is that we needed. We actually went to Brands Mart, same deal. We found a couple that may have worked. Um, so when we came back home, Lou searched online and found something similar in terms of size at Target. So we ordered it online last night. It was available for pickup today. And we're doing a little mix shift to make it work precisely. Let me show you what's going on. All right, so we ended up getting this Whirlpool. It's a nice little two door with, you know, separate freezer. It's 3.1 cubic feet, so it's still bigger than what we had. This is more or less what it's gonna look like inside. And let's walk over to Lou so that I can uh, show you the modification she's doing. And here it is upside down. <laughs> So there's about four screws holding that plate onto the fridge and then like I think four clamps. Yeah, two on this side and then two on that side. And there we go. She just released the clamps. Looks like we just went out to buy a metal piece 
like an aluminum plate. And she's like, oh, we have one. <laughs> we did this. I keep everything. Yes, yes. That keep was everything. like the vents for the other fridge, like to make the air flow in yeah, different in directions. Direction. There it is. <laughs> and it is the exact it's size. It's the exact same size that we need. <laughs> Now, why do we need the aluminum over the wood? Uh, because there's some uh, grounding contacts here, uh -huh. and they're grounded to this metal piece. Okay. So it, I don't think it would ground properly to wood. No. Okay. But it should ground fine here because this metal piece is attached to the refrigerator anyway. Right. So I think it'll create the right conduit. Awesome. I want them to know just in case anybody decides to do a modification like we're doing, and it this helps is them. what I'm doing. Yes, I get it. You know? <laughs> I hope you can learn something from it. Absolutely. We've gotten Use quite a few people that learn something from uh, the bunkhouse removal and Use the wall something. removal. Maybe you can get something useful out of it. That'd yeah. be great. And upgrade your fridge. It's going to give us more space, which is like the most important part. I am so excited about having more freezer space. Because we really don't have a lot of space in the other one. And RV fridges, their temperature fluctuates a lot. So I read on the Norco side site, which is what we have. We have a Norco N302, which is a, a two-way fridge. It's gas and electric. And I read on their site that it says that if you open the refrigerator, it takes one hour to recover one degree. That's insane. And for us, that we eat at home all the time and we cook so much, we have to have an ample amount of food that keeps fresh all the time. And I have to be able to open the refrigerator <laughs> <laughs> without worrying about that. Right, yeah, so. like sour cream and cottage cheese and heavy whipping cream spoils pretty fast. It's causing me a lot of stress. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I would have gotten her reaction <laughs> on camera. <laughs> When she realized about the aluminum plate. Hilarious. So Lou did a little trimming of that aluminum and did a little sanding so it's not sharp. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Muscle, exactly. <laughs> and um So, so I'm gonna use this plate that was in here holding everything uh -huh. as my template. So as you can see, it's the same size. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to, with a marker, mark all the holes I need to make in it so that I can match it up and put it back in there. <coughs> so we've marked, you'll see the little markers in the pen where the holes are. And now Lou is brainstorming how to make the holes. So a blade, it is. more to go all right so so I've got the little notches cut out and the little holes and stuff like that some things I'm gonna hold with zip ties okay um, so now I made this hole I gotta stick this through it that's gonna require some force because it was hard to take out so it's gonna be hard to put in yeah there we go I got it all the way through Take this off. So Lou got a little clever and instead of doing it sticking out like these heads inside uh, because then the nail or the screw would have been sticking out and um, that would have posed a problem. She went ahead and did it the other way around with this flat side up, the long part in and then she locked it with like these little, what are they called, nuts? Mm -hmm. So like that, the nut would hold that wire in place. So we're just about done. So what is the plan with these zip ties? What's going on over here? I'm tying this tank to it. Okay, so you're gonna put it through that 
tank mm -hmm. and then close it and that's what's going to hold it up. Mm -hmm. I see. All right, let me put the camera down so I can help you. Mm -hmm. But at least I wanted to show them what you were doing. So we went from this where we were losing about half an inch with these knobs sticking out to lose modification with no knobs sticking out. And now it should fit perfectly. So I'm not going to be here to be Lou's camera person for the next step because the power tools makes Lexi really anxious. And even just sitting outside with her, it's too close of proximity. So me and Lexi are going to go for a little drive um, while Lou stays here doing some cutting. Let me show you what it is that's going to happen. Um, she's not very good at recording herself, so I'm just going to have to follow up with you afterwards. <laughs> So the idea is that I'm just going to cut up into here, right here. I'm going to just continue cutting up there, and I'm going to cut on the other side. There's a little support under, I don't know if you can get that, but there's this little support here. I don't know if you can see that, and yeah. there's this. So I actually have to cut through this as well. So I know when we put the counter down, we use Gorilla Glue construction glue. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure this is glued to that in that way. So I think that's going to be my biggest challenge is to get it unglued from there uh, once I cut it. All right. So All right. So that's it. That's what's if the plan we're is. Gone. You can press record for a few seconds. Come back to work. <laughs> But I won't, I won't have too much hopes on that. So at least she explained what it is that she's going to do. We'll be back in a little bit. That little lip will give us the extra space that we need for the fridge to fit in there. And this is what I meant by the platform earlier. Like, it's not flush on the ground. Here. And when she measured, she measured it from the ground. Yeah, I measured it from here. So we lost oh. that like half an inch or so, maybe three quarters. Yeah, so that's that. Alright, see you later. Demolition time. Okay, so got a text from Lou saying she was done with the multi-tool. It is raining out there. I'm soaked. <laughs> um, what you doing down there? Uh, finishing it off. Just, you know, trying to get as much out as I can. <laughs> so I guess a Came little... Out in pieces. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Wow. And there were two <laughs> screws, one on each end. I'm gonna have to hold it up. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. that? All right. So I'll check in with you when she's done cleaning that up, so it's nice and smooth to slide the fridge in. <laughs> All right. Time to. Now to see if it fits in there. <laughs> At least I fit through the door, which which was a hassle getting the other fridge out, so. So the fridge is in, guys. Obviously now, since it doesn't have that frame, um, we gotta do some more painting. <laughs> so prime that and paint that, and it should be good to go. Look at this freezer space in comparison to the other one. Loving it. And so we can change the temperatures here. There's a little light bulb in there. We've got a little crisper. Really excited about this tiny fridge. Now it's time to connect her. So yeah, the instruction says once it's grounded and plugged in, it takes four hours to cool. So our stuff is still out there in the cooler, in ice. We'll give this baby a shot and load her up tonight before bed and then see what it's like tomorrow. So excited. Um, thank you guys for following along. <laughs> it was quite the task. It is the next day. After we connected the fridge last night, and then she wanted to put in the little thermostat thing um, the to see, thermometer. yeah, the little thermometer to see how it was working. Yeah. 
and I think like less than five minutes. She's like, I need to see, I need to see. What was the temperature? We let it cool for four hours before we opened it. We did not touch that door for four hours. She right, set a timer. Set. Yeah. So then when you put in that thermostat. The thermometer. Uh-huh. <laughs> the thermometer. Well, yeah, was, when I first checked it, it was 28 degrees. That is really awesome. Yeah. So the food was definitely going to be cold. And then I went out and we watched uh, Alone, which is our new thing. <laughs> and then that was like an hour. Mm -hmm. came back. And I was like, I gotta look at it again. And it was 10 degrees. 10 degrees. In the refrigerator. Not yeah, yeah, yeah. So we didn't have a lot of things in the cooler outside. We basically waited till we were like bare minimum on groceries. So I just went grocery shopping and I think, look at all those bags behind me. I may have gone a bit overboard. <laughs> I think she did. It was scary. <laughs> now let's see if we can fit everything in there. <laughs> Lou wants to check the temperature now before I put in the groceries. Go for it. Open that baby up. And you'll see it's pretty empty. Really, all that's in there is a dozen eggs. Degrees. 18. There's a dozen eggs, heavy cream, and Lexi's food. That is it. That's oh all God, that's in there. There's frost in the back. No way. See, yeah. I told you last night to put it at four instead of five. I don't want it to gather too much frost. Yeah, we're going to have to scrape that off. Alrighty. Well, I guess we gotta take care of that before loaded. Let's see. Oh my god. Yes, that is full of frost. <laughs> so who's gonna take care of cleaning that in there before I put away all of these groceries? <laughs> Okay, so let's do a little bonus clip here. I'm sure you guys are very curious as to not just what I bought, but how much we were able to fit into this Whirlpool 3.2 cubic, is it cubic feet, babe? 3.1 cubic feet. This Whirlpool 3.1 cubic feet uh, double door fridge. So let me bring you along and show you what we were able to fit in here. <laughs> Okay, so let's start with the freezer. I have four packs of frozen veggies from cauliflower to broccoli florets, Brussels sprouts, and green beans. Um, back here, I have three days worth of ground beef, two days worth of steaks, and two days worth of fish fillets, the swai fillets. Um, up front, I have two days worth of chicken breast and two days worth of pork chops. We have a backup bacon. And I have a backup hot dog. And as you can see, there's still plenty more space up there and up here to put more stuff. I'm thinking maybe another four more packs of frozen veggies to match how many days of meat we have. So as some of our condiments end, I will start getting rid of stuff. Chicken broth. This is actually for Lexi. Whenever uh, her stomach's upset, we give her some chicken broth to get it settled. I bought some... Um, bean sprouts because I want us to make like a ramen. I have some lettuce left over. Uh, Lexi's Pepto again for her stomach. <laughs> she has a very sensitive stomach. Um, butter, Lexi's food, and my heavy cream back there. So this is pretty much full. I don't think I'm going to buy the big lettuce heads again because it takes up way too much space. I just might buy the shredded ones um, as we want to eat it. Down here, I have two packs of eggs. I had one and I bought another one. I think going forward, I'm just gonna stick to one per, per shopping round. And asparagus. I have a thing of mayonnaise and ranch. Four yogurts. And then behind the yogurts, I have two or three avocados. And my crisper, because I don't have too many places for condiments, I have my sugar-free ketchup, stone ground mustard, sugar-free jelly, we have our cheddar cheese, our salami, and our turkey. So the fridge is pretty stuffed with that. As for the door, I have some butter and some cream cheese, which means down here is the backup butter and cream cheese. Our snacked uh, string mozzarella cheese and hot dogs. Bacon, and then more con more uh, yeah condiments our sugar-free barbecue sauce and our Rails tomato sauce. So hopefully all of this will be running out soon. I will make us a keto pizza and maybe today we're having ribs so maybe we can get rid of this today, the barbecue sauce. So we'll see. That is everything that fit inside of our fridge and freezer.
We hope you guys enjoyed the removal of the RV fridge and installation of the residential fridge and then the little bonus clip of what's in my fridge. <laughs> if you did, please comment down below um, your thoughts on the whole process of RV and fridge. Um, we'd like to hear your thoughts and... If you haven't subscribed, please do so now. Make sure you click the notification bell so you can get notified every time we upload a video. And thanks for watching. And we'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye, guys. What's going on? She wanted in on this. Always, 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 you can count on the easiest things being the hardest. Always. I'll get another screw. <laughs> oh, do you need the picture that I took for you? Uh, no, actually, I remember. Why do I have three holes there when I only have two things? I guess I need the picture. <laughs> you know what, if I would have done all this with the other one? With the magic chef? I think it would have fit. Yeah, more than likely. But I'm happier with the Whirlpool over the magic chef because that freezer space is so much bigger. Two doors. So, you know, that's yeah. also cool. Yeah. So let's do a little bonus clip here. I'm sure you guys are curious to know... Background.